The fish are changing. A British toxicologist has found that chemicals seeping into the water supply is feminizing the fish population. A fifth of male river fish in the UK have reportedly turned intersex or transgender and are now displaying both male and female characteristics. The mutations are caused by chemicals from contraceptive pills, cleaning products, plastics, and cosmetics that make it to the water system after being flushed down. 20% of male fish tested in 50 sites displayed less competitive mating behavior and reduced sperm quality, with some even producing eggs. Offspring of these transgender fish may also be more sensitive to the effects of chemicals in subsequent exposures. The research by University of Exeter Professor Charles Tyler served as the opening lecture at a fisheries symposium in the British Isles. Fish biologists from around the world are gathering at the symposium to talk about other threats to the fish population and how to address them. Say no to safe spaces on YouTube. Support Tomo News at patreon.com slash Tomo News. Here's more fishy news. Instead of eating plankton, young fish are now eating plastic. About 8 million tons of plastic are leaked into the ocean annually, and its impact on the fragile underwater ecosystem has scientists worried. A new study has found that young fish are eating microplastic like junk food, and it's killing them. Microplastic particles result from the fragmentation of large plastic waste, or from tiny manufactured plastic like microbeads in cosmetic products. Measuring less than 5 millimeters, the particles flow through waterways and into the ocean, accumulating in shallow coastal areas. Larval perch that normally feed on plankton have been found to be actively choosing the microplastic as food. This has resulted in their stunted growth and sudden disregard for the smell of predators. The ability to respond to the smell of predators and flee is typically innate in young fish. When placed in tanks with their natural predator, perch that ate plastic were preyed upon four times faster than those that did not. All were dead within 48 hours. Scientists warn that the harmful effects of plastic is not limited to fish and may be felt throughout the food chain. The study is an important step in understanding the silent threat that plastic wastes poses on marine creatures. A U.S. ban on microbeads in body care products will take effect from July 2017, with pressure building for other countries to follow suit. Faceless fish found in the abyss Australian scientists have discovered a faceless deep-sea fish off Australia's east coast during a month-long expedition. The sampling the abyss expedition begins from Bell Bay, Tasmania and ends in Brisbane. The investigator research vessel is equipped with multi-beam sonar that can map the structure of the seafloor. The expedition surveys the abyssal level, up to 6,000 meters deep in the ocean. Sleds, dredgers, and grabbers are deployed in order to collect samples of animals and sediment. Scientists said animals in the abyss are often small and move slowly, and many of them don't have eyes or produce their own light through bioluminescence. Sushi restaurant butchered for posting video of how it's made. Are you a fan of sushi? Mmm. How about sashimi? Yummy! If you are, then it couldn't hurt to know how your favorite Japanese dish is made. Well, couldn't hurt you, that is. This turbot fish, on the other hand. The technique being employed by this highly trained chef involves paralyzing the fish to maintain its quality as food for longer. Umezushi Restaurant calls theirs a cheat version of the traditional Japanese method known as ikajimi. The first cut disconnects the spine and blood vessels between the body and the brain. Next, the tail is chopped off to allow the blood to drain out. The second cut opens things up to insert a thin metal spike into its body, which is carefully aimed at piercing the hindbrain of the fish, located just above the eye. This step is the finishing blow, killing the animal. You might notice the fish is still flapping around as it's being stabbed, but Umazushi assures us that's just random firing of signals from the nerve system, post-mortem. The restaurant claims the method stops signal transmission to the muscles, delaying rigor mortis from setting in to maintain a soft texture. Though the method is widely considered to be the fastest, most humane way to kill the fish, many sushi lovers couldn't stomach seeing a poor fishy get gutted so swiftly, condemning the restaurant for subjecting them to such horror. Facebook user Annie Carter posts, We'll never eat sushi again if this is the way they prepare it and guaranteed not to visit this restaurant. Hmm, okay. 
User Tom Booth posts, Guys, don't be showing this. Yes, the fish is fresh, but some people just don't want to see that. Huh, wonder why? And user Wesley Ryan Neal takes the cake, posting, Found that quite distressing. I love Umazushi, but not sure you should really promote your Facebook in this way. Though bothered by the visual, Wesley goes on to say, Excited to visit your restaurant again next Friday. Make sure you have plenty of eel in. Smiley face. There's something a little fishy about all the logic here. If you're okay with eating the dish, what's so distressing about understanding how your meal is prepared? You're not even doing the killing. Could it be that witnessing life being stripped away from a living creature forces you to consider the pain and suffering it must go through for you to treat your taste buds? Or are you just squeamish when it comes to seeing blood drain out of a live animal? If watching the butchering of this fish is too much for you, just for a second, try to consider what that fish must be going through. If you're fine with that, by all means, sushi onwards. But if you're not, well, maybe that says something, hmm? Say no to safe spaces on YouTube. Support Tomo News at patreon.com slash Tomo News. Elderly woman cooks grandson's $3,000 pet fish. The red arowana is an incredibly expensive fish and is worth an estimated 3,000 US dollars. Doesn't it look tasty though, especially when steamed and flavored with ginger? Well, a Taiwanese grandmother was apparently thinking along just those lines. A netizen, identified only by his surname Zhang, posted this photo just a few days ago, noting that his friend's grandmother had apparently thought keeping the fish was too taxing on the family's utilities bill. So she decided it'd be a good idea to cook a grandson's pet. The most expensive steamed fish ever. If grandma wants to eat fish, I'm willing to exchange the red arowana with a box of seafood. Curious netizens have managed to dig up a slew of similar stories. Another grandmother, this time in the southern Chinese city of Kunming, cooked the red arowana just three months ago and apparently loved the taste of the fish. Some suspicious netizens are calling Shen on Zhang and claiming it might have copied the Chinese report. Netizen slam frozen fish feature at Japanese skating rink. A Fukuoka theme park thought it would be a good idea to put thousands of dead fish under the ice at their skating rink and is now badly regretting that decision. Space World apparently thought the idea of gliding over a wide variety of sea creatures would be a unique draw for customers. So operators bought 5,000 dead fish and arranged them around the rink, along with blown up photos of larger marine animals. <laughs> when images of the theme park centerpiece got around, they were met with outrage after netizens thought the fish were frozen to death. Despite the clarification that live fish weren't used, most didn't see the appeal, calling the concept weird, cruel, and disgusting. The park was met with a barrage of criticism and calls to boycott the attraction. So much so that they decided to close it down on November 27th. Space World is now melting the rink and will reportedly hold a memorial service for the fish sometime next year. Rest in peace, fishies!